Welcome to today's podcast from Venice Beach in California. We have driven here in an Uber and then we've rented a G-Wagon or Lindsay has rented a G-Wagon um, for not a lot of money. And at home, they're very expensive, but here they're not so expensive because there are so, so many of them. Um, our Airbnb also has a golf course out front, a mini golf course. There are three holes and the holes are about five feet apart, but it is the first and only mini golf experience I have ever had at an Airbnb. Uh, so today we're going to talk about what it's like to be a woman in the wedding photography industry, uh, and I am joined by my wife, Lindsay Coulter. Hello. Hello, Taylor Jackson. What a treat to be on your show. You are on the podcast. Um, so talk a little bit about like the, what, what annoys you the most about, I guess, just sexism in general I in the wedding photography, or just photography space in general, because I feel like this is a much bigger issue than just straight up just wedding photography. Totally. Well, um, you know what? I, I'm i going to start out by saying that Taylor and I are white, privileged people, right? So I think that that's probably the first step is to say that although these things bother me, um, they are made exponentially worse for um, people of color, especially women of color. Um, and I uh, think that there's a lot of things that we need to be doing as people that have privilege and have some sort of platform to um, sort of change the landscape around business owners that are women, that are minorities of any kind. Uh, So I definitely try to talk about that and shine a light in those dark, nasty areas, um, especially in the wedding photography industry. So, um, oh, Yashka's coming in. Hello, Yashka. Welcome to the podcast. This is our friend Yashka. He's uh, coming in the front door. He was just playing some mini putt. Uh, mini Yashka, we're talking about sexism in the wedding industry. Uh, I don't agree with it. He doesn't agree with it. Uh, so one of the, well, we'll start with one of the most obvious things. When I uh, first got started, I uh, had, I hired a lot of male second photographers. And one of the, f- I'll say funniest things now (laughs) that happened would be that I would walk into a venue and um, a family member or guest would show up and immediately walk over to my male second photographer and start asking them questions about when are we doing family photos and the rundown of the day and where things are happening. And it wouldn't matter how many times these guys would be gems and cue to me and say, oh, Lindsay's actually like my boss for the day. She's the one that this client hired, uh, they'd be like, oh, okay, cool. And then still continue the conversation with my male second photographer who walked on the job this day. Like they learned that bride's name that morning (laughs) and they, sure, I hope know some, they've been briefed on the schedule and whatnot, but like they don't really know any of the situation going on, but just the assumption is, and it's not just from men, women do it to us all the time as well, because We live in a society where we have convinced ourselves, and I have to check myself on it too every once in a while, that men run businesses and women work for them. So I think that both women and men have a long way to go to change that, um, I guess, story, (laughs) to change the the, um, landscape around how we look and view um, people that run their own businesses. Yeah, so one of the other things, um, I guess there's a few things that I've noticed as um, kind of maybe an outsider perspective, just watching you run your business. Um, I've noticed that for me, not a lot of people ever email. Um, I don't I don't tend to get a lot of like angry emails. And I feel like people are a little more abrasive, like women on women, um, as far as like emailing. Oh. Um, and I've just like, as far as like even pricing goes that yeah. you'll get you'll get kickbacks, um, like of emails that are just like, that people are upset about how much you're charging. And that's not something that I've ever mm-hmm. received. Like woman on woman crime is for sure a real thing. It's not just a thing in Mean Girls. Like it is most definitely a thing because I, and I do believe it is because of the patriarchy. Sorry, dudes, if you're feeling uncomfortable with this, um, too bad. Uh, <laughs> just keep listening. <laughs> it, it doesn't get better for you. But <laughs> I do think that. Um, if you uh, if you look at how women treat each other, it is because we have been told that we have to hold ourselves to this unbelievable standard, that we have to look pretty, 
always say the right thing, but not too many things, to speak loudly when we're required to and then shut up when we're not required to speak. And this unreasonable standard that's been set for us since birth, really, to be this perfect like this perfect person. I think that perfectionism is a huge thing for women. I don't see a lot of dudes struggling with the, like, I have to be an amazing father and business owner and keep this house tidy and all of these things and also keep up on texting my friends back and also make sure that I get my hair touched up every couple of weeks. And like, we just have all of these things that we hold ourselves to this unbelievable standard. So, when I get clients reaching out to me, I think that they also are, and I hope that they always hold me to a high standard, but it's much harder for me to convince people that I'm an expert in my field. It's far easier for men to convince people that they are an expert in their fields in anything that they do. They put on a suit and put up a fancy website and immediately they are an expert in that field. And for me, I hustle, hustle, hustle in order to be made, um, known that I'm an expert. One of the really good examples of this is that um, a wedding venue um, in our area has made a ton of people who essentially are like assistants to us <laughs> were made preferred vendors before I was. And it's so funny to me because I'm like, okay, so yeah, they've been on the property a few times, always second shooting for me. Um, they have maybe had their work submitted to the venue to be published, um, given it to them for advertising. But I have done this every single year for six years. Every single year I put together 20 to 30 galleries from their property to send to them to say, hey guys, whenever you're making your preferred vendor list, I would really love to be on it. Your clients always give me great reviews. I really love working with you. And I know that the people on the ground do enjoy working with me. That's not like a, I don't think it needs an ego thing, but I do think that they enjoy working with me because I'm an easygoing person. And yet somehow these guys are getting made preferred vendors after being a wedding photographer for a year. So like, I can't say that that's because they're more talented than me or because they've put in more hours or they've put in more work or they've been, you know, better at their jobs. It's because they are more easily, um, I think because people look at them more easily, like they're going to be an expert in the field. And it's mind boggling if you actually look at it. I think that this year they made me a preferred vendor and I think they probably looked at it like, oh shoot, we kind of thought you were already. The other funny thing is they think that because Taylor and I are... (laughs) married, that I must be just getting the same level of work because Taylor and I are married, but we have two totally separate companies. Yeah. Um, So maybe let's talk about that for a little bit. Um, So we decided very early on to not join, I guess, forces in one business and that it made a lot more sense to run two separate independent businesses because essentially like your business as a wedding photographer is yourself, that you are like, you are the business. And in order to tell two stories, um, it would it would just kind of feel weird to tell two stories together when we both wanted to be doing this full time. Um, and we felt that we both had enough of, I guess, a story on our own that would attract a specific type of client. And now that I've been to some of your weddings and Second Shot for You and you've been to some of mine, I feel like we definitely have a very specific style of, um, I guess, bride and groom. And, and the, how we shoot and how mm-hmm. we run our businesses and how we email, all of those things are so different, our communication skills, and there's a place in our market for both of us. Yeah, Um, and yeah, it was definitely like a conscious decision, and I think it was the right one. Um, No offense to anyone that is running a husband-wife business, and I feel like if you are, as a couple, running a business, that as long as you have like a strong role within those, um, like within that business, that's totally fine. Um, We decided to do it this way. We're also both terrified of having assistant or like associate photographers um, and trusting (laughs) someone (laughs) else to go out and do something. Even if like we love them, I would way rather pass like Tim, for instance, I would way rather give him a job for him to manage completely on his own and be like, hey, here's a referral rather than trying to like subcontract him through our business to go out and shoot on our behalf. Um, And again, that's like kind of just something that I am the most comfortable with doing, just Mm -hmm. that I'm okay with giving him that work, I guess, and not trying to keep somebody like under our, under our banner. Yeah. Um, and I think that it's, it's easier for me to understand and to market just like a wedding photography business. that is just one person. Absolutely. And I also feel like, um, when we were first starting 
out together, really, we were just starting to get to know each other. So I think a lot of the husband and wife companies, there's usually one driving force and then one person that's along for the ride. At the very least, that's in the early days, what we have seen um, through like Wedding Business Co. when we were really learning a lot about other um, wedding photographers um, and what their businesses looked like. A lot of it was that the husband or wife was the photographer, the main photographer. And realistically, I don't know, uh, and maybe people can comment and tell us what they actually think and let us know, but like, uh, do you both work as primary photographers as the wedding, uh, as a, a couple that's doing wedding photography? I feel like they're always should be one lead at least for certain parts of the day for portraits if we're having two leads on this that's going to get really messy really quickly even when you and i work together uh we always decide who is taking the lead on things and i feel confident enough if you're the lead for me to say hey i have this great idea i'm going to jump in here but 80 percent of the time it's you guiding that ship along you know um i feel like also you and i noticed that you had a very successful and already profitable company. It would be a different thing if you were struggling and I was like, hey, I have this like different marketing perspective or different different business view than you and you're very talented creatively but maybe lacking the business side of things. I didn't really have anything to add to your business. I would have just been taking away income because there's no way we could have justified being like, so we're just going to double this, no problem, hope you're okay with that to our clients. Um, but it, it really has been, been quite interesting whenever I tell people that um, I'm a wedding photographer. The next question typically is, what does your husband do? Uh, because I think people still consider this to be a cute hobby. Uh, I do not think anyone... Has anybody ever said, when you tell them you're a wedding photographer, has anybody ever said, what does your wife do? Never. That's incredible. <laughs> it's, it's like an every single conversation thing um, with a stranger. Oh, what does your husband do? Uh, I once went to get an oil change and it was in the middle of the day and the guy was like, oh, are, are you a student? And I said, no, I'm not a student. I'm, I'm self-employed. And it was just, a, he was a nice guy having a nice conversation. And I said, no, I'm self-employed. What do you do? And he was driving us to our neighborhood. So he knew like I, we didn't live in <laughs> a slummy area. And, and I said, oh, I'm a photographer. And he said, wow, that's a really nice hobby. What does your husband do? He must have a great job. And I was like, yeah, he has a great job. He's a wedding photographer. And it was just very silent for the rest of the drive home as the shuttle driver <laughs> drove me back to our house. But that conversation happens all of the time. It's part of the reason I really love not having to sit at tables with guests. But I think it is our role, especially as um, white women that are privileged enough to be able to have the conversation of like, no, I, I do run a business for myself and have the conversation in a polite way that people don't just think like you're a nasty woman. <laughs> but I think that it's hard to educate people um, on equality and on feminism without coming off harsh it definitely comes off as a little bit abrasive because somebody the reason that you're having to educate them is because somebody has treated you like you're less than so there has to be this sort of way that you can educate someone politely without it coming off as oh well I'm just gonna write this person off because they're nasty and aggressive at least this is my experience and totally if you guys have better <laughs> suggestions for how I navigate this I would love for you to send me a message and tell me but in my experience if I come at it aggressively it's just the conversation is dead but if I come at it like oh that's you know I can understand why you would think that my male second photographer is the main but he's not actually it's okay you're not the first person but um yeah you know this is his second year shooting and this is not my second year shooting but yeah I think we really have to go at it um from a position of kindness and understanding until somebody shows you otherwise that they genuinely just are truly sexist. Because for the most part, people are really just following what society has taught us for years, right? But I think that for Taylor and I, we really try to um, educate because we are in a position that people will listen to us without um, judging or thinking that we're being nasty. But especially white dudes, like if you hear... Um, if you're a second photographer or you hear somebody speaking to your wife as though she's some idiot that's not working, you know, it's just working for you, um, step in because people listen to you. It's the same thing as schoolyard bullies, right? If the popular kid in class steps up, it doesn't make him any less popular. It just makes people respect you and it also levels the other person up to where you are just by being born looking the way you do. <laughs>
Um, a lot of good points. Have you ever thought about just getting a bigger camera to look more professional? Because <laughs> that's seriously a thing. No, it's absolutely a um, thing. Because it's a, a reason why, uh, even if you wanted to shoot like Fuji mirrorless, mm -hmm. which has the most beautiful small form factor. Perfect. Um, as, as a woman, would you be comfortable doing that? Do you think that that would actually make things more challenging? Oh, we talk about this all the time because, I mean, I still get gear bros, like, coming up to me saying, oh, what kind of camera is that, you know? And and I'll, I'll have that conversation for a half a second. Um, but then usually the gear bro says, well, why aren't you shooting mirrorless? Uh, I have shoulder problems. And sure, like... Especially as a woman, we should be we should be shooting mirrorless, right? Like our frames are smaller. I work out every day. Like Taylor doesn't have to work out to carry these big cameras around. It doesn't I carry my seventy two hundred around. Yeah, a lot. A lot. I work out. Yeah, I don't. I I had to like move to a rolly bag, which is so not me and so not my vibe. But I just had to because I was murdering my shoulders. But um, I would love, 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 love to have a mirrorless camera. I bought a Fuji on our honeymoon and I was like, this is the best thing that's ever happened to me. And then I just had this very sad moment of like, <laughs> no one will ever take me seriously when I show up to this. They're going to be like, oh, that's so cute. What a cute camera. And then, you know, every uncle is going to be like, my camera is way bigger than yours. And everyone will always question my professionalism, my abilities and I do believe that they would uh, look at my deliverable in a much more, um, I would say, like critical way. They're going to look at the deliverable like, oh my gosh, she shot this on a point and shoot. Could she be doing anything worse, right? So yeah, when I am showing up to weddings that ha had a huge budget and I think they're probably expecting me to roll up with five people. I'm going to shoot on a 24 to 70 and 70 to 200 just because they're bigger lenses, not because I like them, just because I think shooting on my small 35, people are going to think like this isn't even a real camera. And that's shooting on an 850. It's like a decent sized camera. <laughs> yeah, no, it is sad. It's very funny and sad. But I mean, the more we keep working on it, the more we'll get there. But um, I do feel like I'm already, I keep on thinking, well, when I'm at a place in my career that people truly respect me and like they know me just on my name then I can start shooting on whatever I want but like I'm there I got like my car got ran into the other day and this cop was like oh Lindsay I know who you are um my wife is a photographer that's really cool so I'm like I'm at a place that people recognize me and I still do not feel comfortable in doing that I don't know that there's a point in which I'll be able to do that um, I think everybody else needs to make big changes before I can, <laughs> and that's sad, but before I can do that. Yeah. All right. Well, that is uh, maybe the deepest episode we've gone into in this podcast. <laughs> uh, if you don't yet follow Lindsay, her Instagram is L Coulter photo. Um, and you can follow her, send her DMs, any questions. And uh, we'll probably have her back on the show because it's probably the most convenient podcast guest. To have. <laughs> um, but yeah, lots of interesting things to think about and um, a lot of things that, Maybe if you're a dude and a lot of your photographer friends are all dudes, that maybe that's not feedback that you're ever getting. So hopefully you picked up a little something from today. Um, on Patreon on Monday, I put up a promotional video script. So if you are a photographer and you're looking at building a promotional video, it's kind of like a choose your own adventure, um, build your own script. So if you're a Patreon member, if not, maybe hop over there and check it out. There is lots and lots and lots of content. Um, I don't even know how many videos we're up to now, but it is a lot of stuff like full pricing walkthroughs, full contract, my contract's up there, all kinds of things. So if you're interested in that, head over to Patreon. Thanks for listening, and we'll be back tomorrow from hopefully sunnier California because it's, it's a little rainy today, but that's all right. See you then.